Hello, my name is Dean Alhoss, and today I'm going to teach you how to lay out the Petty Cash Book. The sixth book of original entry is known as the Petty Cash Book. In the previous tutorial, we discussed that the junior accountant, known as the Petty Cashier, will be given the job or the responsibility of paying out small expenses to the workers. So, for example, if someone who is employed or works for a business was to go to the supermarket and buy biscuits and tea and coffee to use in the business, then they would expect to have that money back. The job of the petty cashier is to make sure that the money is returned to the worker in the business from the petty cash tin. The money that is in the petty cash tin is known as an impressed amount and that amount will be a fixed amount given to the junior accountant by the senior accountant at the beginning of each month. In the example that we are about to go through we can see that the impressed amount is 300 so $300 would be the amount of money that the petty cashier needs to start with at the beginning of each month. Now if we look at this actual um, petty cash book, we can see that there is a balance brought down on the received side of $48. The way to crack the petty cash book and understand it really is to think of this side as an amount of money coming in almost like a debit and the total paid side as the amount of money leaving the business on the credit. So here, and this is a little bit strange for some students to understand, you have a balance brought down and whereas you would normally write the number on the right hand side because the column for total received is actually on the left hand side, the amount that is left in the petty cash tin from last month uh, August will be the opening balance for this month on the 1st of September and we can see here that's $48. So what am I trying to say? Well $48 was left in the tin at the end of last month and is the same amount that's in the tin at the beginning of the new month. So when the senior accountant is then deciding how much money he or she needs to give the petty cashier, they will take that $48 away from the 300 that they want to be in the petty cash tin during the month. So obviously 300 minus 48 leaves you with an amount of 252 that needs to be received by the petty cashier either from the cash or the bank account. Now the petty cashier has $300 in the petty cash tin. Usually in an exam question you'll be given a load of expenses or a list of expenses that the petty cashier then has to pay out to various members of the company. So we can see here on the total paid side, the credit, the money going out of the petty cash book starts on the 6th of September where we had to make a payment of $15 to someone for the stamps that they bought on behalf of the business. Now be very careful that you also put the amount under the postages and stationery, which is obviously the correct column for stamps, but also put the $15 in the total paid. If you forget to do that on the exam, you will lose the whole one mark. On the 11th, we can see we paid Paul Ahipara 95. And in this case, ledger accounts means that that person that we've paid is a creditor. Okay, so again, it's nothing different. It's just that we're paying a creditor out of the petty cash tin. It's unusual, but sometimes we will use uh, the petty cash money to pay a small bill that we owe to our suppliers or our creditors. And then we had to pay various other expenses like for the cleaner on the 19th, which was 24, and that goes under the cleaning column. We had to pay travelling expenses, which goes under the travel expenses column. Again, the totals are all again placed in that total column and that will be very important in a minute when we go through balancing off the account. On the 25th we bought stationery of 72 so it goes in the postages and stationery column. The total 
of 72 goes in the total paid column. And we can now see that we use this total of all the things that we have spent money on. In other words, all the money that's come out of our petty cash tin. When we add the 15, the 95, the 24, the 9 and the 72, they come to a total of 215. We did also get a refund on stationery. What that means is that obviously something that we'd bought, maybe we bought a pack of pens, for example, didn't work. And so we would expect a refund from the shop. If they give us our money back, that $6 in this case is going to go back into our tin. So that's going to add to the amount that we actually have inside our tin. So if we had $215 that we paid out, and we have the $300 that we were given by the accountant plus the $6 that we received as a refund, that means at some stage during the month we had $306 actually in our tin. If we take that 306 away from the amount that we actually paid out, which we said was 215 that means we have $91 left in our tin at the end of the month, which in this case is the 30th. And that would be our balance carried down. When we add the 215 to the 91, that gives us a total column of 306 on this side. And when we add the amount that we had in the tin at a point in time, 48, 252 and 6 also gives us 306. Make sure you write the columns for the total in or on the same line. Obviously, if we have a balance carry down of 91, that means that the balance bought down on the first day of next month, which is October, would also be 91. Again, putting it simply, that just means that we have $91 in our cash tin at the beginning of next month. And that's important so that the chief accountant can now work out how much he or she has to pay us to take the amount up to the impressed of 300 US dollars. Well, in this case, we've already got 91. The chief accountant is going to have to give us 209 dollars. And then the only other thing to add to the construction of the petty cash book is to say to remember to add up the totals for your various expenses. So for postages and stationery, we add up the 15 and the 72, we have 87. And that tells us that we have spent $87 on our postages and stationery. And then, of course, we would put that on the debit side of our expenses account as a total. And for traveling expenses, we paid out $9. For cleaning, $24. And to our creditor, Paul Ahipara, we paid out $95. I hope you found that useful. If you did, then please wait up for the next tutorial to load up on the playlist. Remember, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you do like what we're doing, then please hit the like button.